Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Bootlicker shills, death slicers, peasants, vassals, minions. Only written in Arabic. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And today I want to talk about Iraq. And I want to talk about Iran. And as it turns out, uh, Iranian presence in Iraq is uh, considerable. And uh, we have this latest report on August 23rd in the uh, town of Jalayula in the Diyala province. And reports are that hundreds of Iranian troops uh, moved over the border from Iran, fought with Kurdish Peshmerga against ISIS. And that was on Friday. And then by Saturday, uh, they returned back into Iran. So a very interesting incident. Well, apparently, Iranian artillery was involved. And uh, I've read one article that said that uh, the Iranian presence was more like 1,500 troops and not several hundred. And so this is a, a pretty interesting. Um, and we have, uh, of course, this previous video I did about the Iranian presence in Iraq. And then all the stories we've heard since have talked about uh, speculation of uh, uh, Iranian presence. But more importantly, substantial uh, facts. Uh, the uh, One of the heads of the uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard, the Quds Force, um, is in Baghdad, and uh, actually just in the last several days he has been replaced, so, so a pretty shocking move there. Um, Hamalati is now the new uh, head of uh, Iranian operations in Iraq, so interestingly enough they uh, found that uh, the Iranian presence there hasn't been effective enough and replaced their leadership in Iraq. And this only adds more confirmation to the dynamics that uh, Iran is heavily involved in the conflict in Iraq. And um, we have uh, this uh, leadership presence in Baghdad. And we, we already know that uh, members of the uh, Revolutionary Guard and uh, the uh, Shia uh, militia volunteer forces from Iran are in Iraq uh, training, supposedly training uh, the Shia militias in uh, Iraq. But uh, as it turns out, uh, there's a lot more going on. And uh, as I did research, I found more and more stories that seem to uh, uh, confirm uh, to a great degree that there's been a, a, a Iranian presence in Iraq has been for quite some time, and certainly, especially the last uh, three months. Um, so let's go down uh, some of these other stories that have come out. Well, June 14th, uh, there was a report that 2,000 Iranian troops were sent into Iraq, and in fact, at the time, an Iraqi official confirmed uh, with fairly specific details that 1,500 Iranian forces had entered, to, entered the town of Kanakin in the Diyala province, the same as uh, um, the most recent entry of Iranian troops, and it's only uh, several, uh, uh, or 20 or 30 miles from the Iranian border, so it makes sense that this would work this way. So 15 100 uh, entered the town of Kanakin, and then another 500 entered the town of Badr Jassan in the Wasat province. So an entirely different province. So there, uh, June 14th is a report of 2,000 Iranian troops being in Iraq. And then uh, soon after that, uh, another article appeared June 20th in the Wall Street Journal, and it said uh, uh, Iranian troops were deployed to help protect Baghdad and Shia holy sites, and uh, they, the sources were cited to be Iranian security officials. I, I was been confused because a lot of times uh, they mention these sources, and, and uh, one of the articles I read pointed out that there seems to be a disagreement between different elements in, in Iran, uh, in the Foreign Service in Iran, and uh, other elements that uh, disagree about how much to talk about. Iranian involvement in Iraq. And um, so anyway, uh, these Iranian officials, uh, one article they say they deny absolutely that there's any Iranian troops in Iraq, but then another official will uh, acknowledge it. And that was the case, certainly. And then uh, June 16th, uh, um, uh, two, two days after the uh, that first incident I talked about, uh, Wall Street Journal uh, reported that an, an Iranian Quds soldier, a pilot, um, was killed outside of Baghdad. And he was killed on the ground. He wasn't shot down from a plane. But uh, not only that, they have his name, Colonel Kamal Shirkani. 
and he died in a mortar attack in Samara. So there we have a, an Iranian uh, um, a casualty in the field. And if that wasn't enough, there's a report that just came out uh, today, as a matter of fact, that claims that over 23 Iranian soldiers have been killed by ISIS just, just in the last month and all around the Samara region. And that makes sense because you, you, Iranian uh, military spokesmen have talked about the fact that uh, they, they will protect these Shia holy, holy sites. And so we're seeing uh, these deaths, uh, Iranian deaths in that region. And uh, also uh, June 25th um, in uh, the New York Times, we have a story where Iran is directing surveillance drones in Iraq. And uh, let's remember that the drones that uh, Iran has are the ones that they uh, did reverse engineering that captured from the U.S. And they're, now they're actually using those in Iraq. And uh, they've been shipping in 140 tons a day of military equipment to Iran, uh, Iraq uh, recently. So they're supplying a huge amount of new arms um, to the Iraqi uh, government. And uh, they also have an uh, Iranian signals intelligence, intelligence unit in Baghdad. So we have spies and uh, soldiers. And, uh, and then uh, we have uh, um, a story actually going all the way back to June 12th um, where Iranian troops worked with Iraqi forces to assault uh, Tikrit. And uh, that uh, assault eventually failed, but uh, Iranian tanks were involved. And uh, this is uh, sounded far-fetched at first, but one of the most uh, uh, convincing articles that I've attached below uh, actually goes into great detail about these Iranian tanks that were involved in this June 12th Iranian assault uh, in Tikrit. And let's remember that around that same area is Karbala and Najaf, and um, Iran certainly will not let any uh, ill fate from ISIS uh, befall those uh, uh, sacred sites. Um, and then we have uh, also on August uh, 26th today, we have uh, several uh, Iranian uh, Su-25 warplanes inside Iraq. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, there was one pilot who was killed. But as it turns out, these planes are, are being flown by Iranian pilots as well. So we have Iranian warplanes actually um, operating inside Iraq, as far as I can tell. Um, if anybody has any information that uh, shows that uh, Iraqi pilots are flying these planes, I would be more than happy to see it. And then al also today we find out that uh, Iran has been uh, supplying weapons to Kurdistan. And this is confirmed by uh, Barzani. Brazani said, quote, we asked for weapons, and Iran was the first country to provide us with weapons, unquote. So now we have the U.S. and uh, Britain and Germany and France and <laughs> Iran all supplying weapons to uh, the Kurds. And, uh, and then what a, what a shocker. We also find out today that Iran is now sending advisors to Kurdistan. So the U.S. sends advisors to these different places. Uh, and now Iran is indulging in that same uh, game. And uh, let's remember that the foreign minister of Iran just visited. Uh, so these, these uh, processes in Kurdistan by Iran will, uh, will accelerate. And, uh, and then we also have a story from uh, August 1st. Um, and a, uh, an Iranian military force of 200 arrived at Suleimaniya International Airport in Kurdistan on route to Kirkuk. So apparently they were involved in, uh, uh, in uh, some of these uh, clashes in the Kirkuk and Tikrit regions, uh, working with Peshmerga as well. And uh, the stories uh, said that they're actually being facilitated by uh, the PUK forces out of uh, um, uh, uh, Union, the Kurdistan Union forces, and this is also um, confirmed by a Kurdish official. But uh, there's a number of reasons why uh, this whole thing is kept under wraps. My speculation is that there's a, a U.S.-Iran arrangement, and they may not necessarily be coordinating their efforts, although I would have to imagine they are, uh, but they're certainly not going to acknowledge this in, in, in uh, public. And in fact, the Political talk uh, out there 
uh, verifies uh, what we would would suspect to find or expect to find. Uh, first of all, the uh, quote uh, the information about the presence. And this is a Iranian official quote the information about the presence of Iranian soldiers in Iraq is not correct. We don't have a single Iranian soldier on Iraqi soil because Iraq does not need this, those soldiers, unquote. Well, that's laughable in the sense that everyone knows that Iraqi uh, needs those soldiers. But uh, if uh, these guys are as slippery as uh, politicians around the world, and I suspect they are, uh, he says we don't have a single Iranian soldier on Iraqi soil. Well, of course they don't have a single Iraqi uh, Iranian soldier. They have thousands. So uh, I would suspect that's the way that works. Then we have U.S. spokesman saying, quote, we've encouraged Iran to play a constructive role in Iraq, unquote. So that's pretty much diplomatic uh, nod and a wink. So, and then we even have Senator Shamless, um, who's in the Intelligence Committee, said, quote, the Iranians are playing in a big way in Iraq, unquote. So we have uh, diplomatic speak confirming the fact that uh, everybody seems to know uh, that Iran is, uh, has a, a large presence in Iraq and is involved in uh, activities throughout the country, is arming the government, is arming the Kurds, um, has military forces there, has uh, uh, fighter jets there, has uh, 10 divisions on the border with Iran and Iraq uh, on that border. In Iran, at any point, if uh, any of the holy sites are, are threatened, or even Baghdad, uh, it's hard to say um, what could happen. An interesting situation. Uh, for the most part, they're gonna, they're going to continue to downplay it. They're going to U.S. officials are going to deny it. Uh, many uh, Iranian officials will deny it. But the fact is, it's a very apparent that there is a, 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 some sort of understanding between the United States and Iran. They're both on the same side here. And there, there's even uh, articles discussing, uh, U.S. spokesmen discussing what would happen if the U.S. Uh, soldiers ended up encountering Iranian soldiers inside Iraq. So that's an interesting sideline as well. But another reason why they don't want to talk about this is because, uh, the, and there will be an unlikely expansion, at least in the near future, is the, the uh, fa fanning of the Sunni Shia dynamic and Iranian presence there would uh, uh, not set well with the Sunni population there but uh, who knows with uh, ISIS uh, basically breathing down their necks and, uh, and eventually turning on their, their Sunni compatriots I'm sure um, th this thing could continue to get more and more complicated and our Iranian presence uh, could be an interesting factor so uh, so there we have it um, no question whatsoever, the Iranian military is involved in Iraq in a big way, in the words of even a U.S. congressman. I'm a useful idiot, don't you be one too.